Poughkeepsie Zoning Board of Appeals uh, meeting. Uh, first, let's stand and rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty, justice, <clears throat> There's an agenda up here for any of those who, who don't have a copy. We will take uh, each applicant in the order of the agenda. Typically, the applicant comes up and makes a presentation. If there's anyone in the audience that wishes to speak on the matter, um, they, they can come forward, they're sworn in, and say whatever they want about um, the application. Um, and so, the first one is Vassar College. Uh, that is adjourned, or it's to be adjourned until April 13th, so I'll make a motion to adjourn the Vassar College application until the April 13th uh, meeting. Second. Uh, any comments? All those in favor, by aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, that's carried. So next is um, Kathleen and Kathleen Sinisi, 19 Darling Drive. Do you want to come up? Okay, you've previously been sworn, so you're still under oath. Okay. Um, the last time uh, you were here, we spoke about maybe all, um, as an alternative to a fence, you could consider some landscaping yes. that wouldn't require a variance. Do you have any new information on that? Um, yes. Um, Why don't you pull the microphone down so yes. we can um, hear I just contacted Adams Landscaping. And so, uh, I mean, I have a sheet, you know, if you want to look at the town board, if you have time, but but it's pretty, pretty much privacy tree planning that they did. It would be around the house, but I didn't write a sketch, but it would be along the fence. And then if I, it's hard to explain, but it would be along the front of the house and then the back, like okay. fronting in the driveway. So it'd be almost like if this was the front and then the driveway it would be like this almost in a way. Five trees in the front and four on five on the driveway. Okay, so your application was for a fence, and yeah. that, so you don't need a, a variance to, boot, to do the landscaping. Yes. That's so if you want to proceed that way, you can just withdraw your application if you like. Um, what would, yeah, I could, um, what would be the, pro what would happen with the driveway if it's not secure? Then if, if, if the camera is pointing across the street to my house, like what would, how would you, in a way. Well, there, like, there's, you wouldn't be able to put anything no. there anyway, so. And not a fence, even through, yeah. Well, I mean, the means withdraw. Yeah, I could withdraw from the fencing aspect, I guess, because I think we're going to. We gonna... really need a work permit for the landscaping, is that right? That's correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so we could probably just withdraw it then. Okay. All right. So then, um, if you withdraw, we can you would withdraw without prejudice, and you can go forward that way. Well, we didn't think you would really approve of the ten foot fencing in the front. There's no line, you know. We didn't. Oh, I think that's why we suggested perhaps an alternative that would accommodate you for what you wanted to do. Okay. All right. All right. Oh, sorry. I'm going to mark this one as withdrawn. Okay. All right. Okay. That's okay. Good. All right. Thank you. All right. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, number three is the Mental Health America of Dutchess County. Um, I'm going to recuse myself, so if you don't mind taking over. No. Are you still sworn in? Is he still sworn in? I, I guess so. Okay. <coughs> so you were here last month, I believe. Is there anything new? Would you like to explain anything? Uh, just to clarify on the, on the uh, agenda. And we had called because the agenda was uh, not exactly what I'm here for. Um, the agenda indicates that, again, I'm proposing another 120 foot, 121 foot square foot sign, and that's not uh, that's not what we're looking at now. 
So the agenda will always read what's on your application? Oh, I thought we something different was on the application. So, so um, and then as you modify, um, we'll just deem it a modified application, but whatever you're looking for at the current okay. time is what okay. the board would vote on. So we had spoken uh, last time and you had made the recommendation that if, if uh, the Claudio Cares Foundation happened to be renting space from us and we, we did enter into a lease agreement with them, uh, you would consider so this sign over here is asking for a uh, a, a, a 3.66 foot variance on this sign because it's 18.6 feet and not 15 feet mm -hmm. um, and uh, we had it was the same size sign that was there prior to us purchasing the building and you seemed pretty positive about that you made the recommendation at the very end that perhaps we can put a sign on the other side of the door that would match it in size so it wouldn't look funny or different. It would look pretty good, actually. Uh, so this is what we are asking for now. So this is a variance for a second sign, and it's an 18.66-foot sign, exactly the same as the other one on the other side. So that's what I'm hoping to accomplish today if possible. Okay. Do you have copies of this? I can pass it out if you'd like. We did not get copies of it. Thank you. Can you, you, read the thing you just, can you just do me a favor and mark on the original one that we're going to give to Sonia and put in the file that they're both 18.66 square feet, and then we'll make that the official file copy for Sonia. Right. Sonia, I'm going to ask you to use this one for the file copy, and I'll trade you for that. Thank you. So she wants that one. Sorry, that had a mint in my mouth, sorry. Okay, we have a letter from the county, you know, saying that the size of the signs that you wanted. And I can skip right to the recommendations? Yes. Yeah, just mention that, what their concerns were. Okay. Um, and you, you got a copy of the letter from the county? I, I, I don't know. It okay. arrived at about 4 o'clock today. Then I so do not have a yeah. copy. Probably not get it. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so initially they, they were saying that the 121 square feet were only 15 square feet is permitted. They didn't uh, really care for that. Um, the second wall sign along Haight Avenue, they were not in favor of. And a second wall sign of 18.66 where only 15 square feet is permitted. Um, the 3.66 square feet feet for the existing mental health American sign is a matter of local concern. Uh, try to read this as we go. Proposal of an additional wall sign, but you're, you're withdrawing that, right? The 121 square foot? Yes, we're withdrawing that because I didn't think that had a chance to uh, pass, so. Okay. Um, basically, the recommendations uh, for the reasons stated above, they recommend the board discuss using the town's temporary sign regulations address the provisions for a second wall sign. And the voting and reporting requirements, the board acts contrary to our recommendations. The law, re the law requires that it do so by majority plus one of the full membership of the board and it notify the county of the reasons for that decision. So I think the, uh, you know, the county was obviously reacting to the, the 121 square right. foot, the largest sign. So I think that, you know, in this instance, it's, it's um, you know, clearly we've got a much smaller second sign. So we still have variances, but I don't think there's anything contradicting what the county has stated right. here. This would not be a temporary sign. This would be a right, but the county um, deemed the variance for the initial sign of 18.66 square feet to be a matter of local well, concern. Correct. So you don't need a super majority for that. I note for everyone in the audience tonight, there are six board members tonight. For anything, if it had, was something that had to go to county planning, we would need at least five people to approve um, for anything that gets voted on where the county recommended a denial. 
But um, in this instance, the first sign is a matter of local concern, and the second sign is not something that the county has seen because it's just being proposed tonight. I think it's fair to assume that since there are now a second establishment in there, it would be deemed also a matter of local concern, and we can probably proceed in that manner. Um, do you have anything else for us tonight? Uh, no. Okay. Anyone in the audience care to speak on this? Not, I make a motion that we. Uh, Could I just? Oh, oops. I just wanted okay, I'm sorry, to ask. Board, yes, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, you had talked about a new door. We have a new door in is, there now. Is this the new? That door? is not the new door. No. Okay. No, the new door is. Uh, it looks very similar to that. It wasn't <laughs> for the price. It wasn't much of a different look, but uh, but it is a brand new door uh, that's on the front. Uh, the only thing that uh, the next thing we're going to do that's. I asked the sign guy to do anyway was there was a, a real estate thing sticking out the front of the building which looks ugly with no real estate sign on it or I'm gonna have that taken down uh, we did some window treatments in that we put uh, newer blinds in the front so that visually looks better from the road uh, we're gonna do we're gonna continue to do everything we can to make it look uh, more presentable than it was thank you you're welcome so, and before you do anything with the hearing, um, can I ask you about the lease? You said you entered into a lease. How yep. long is the lease for and what like space are they getting within the building? It's uh, a small space for them to keep, um, I have it here, a small space for them to keep um, uh, stuff for their events. Okay. Um, and the lease was, I believe it was a year. Okay. So the only thing going forward is that the sign will be able to be in place for as long as the lease is in place? Yes, and yes. And just so that then that should probably be a condition of any variance that the board would do. Yeah. No problem at all. Tony? I have nothing. Larry? No questions. My only question, this is not, they're not going to have any illumination, right? They're not going to be lighted no, in any way. No light. lit up sign. No, no illumination. I could, I'd be happy to do that if you'd like, but no, no. It's okay. Thank we're you. not open at night, so there's no point okay. to illuminate it. Thank you. If there are no audience members, um, I make a motion we close this to public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 What and was that a motion for? Just to close, just the, public to close the public hearing. End it until, got it, okay. Thank and you. one recusal is noted. Thank you. Okay, next is Stewart Shops. Um, so my understanding is that there's a request to adjourn that until the May 11th yeah. hearing. So That's I'll make, correct. A, I'll make oh, a motion. May 11th? Yeah, they, uh, th we just today spoke to them about their uh, schedule with the planning board, and because they're not going to be uh, on for the March meeting of the planning board, they won't be there until April. They won't be back to us until May. So. At the earliest. Ideally. So May 11th. All right. Did I make that motion? I don't know. I don't ah. think so. <coughs> so I make a motion to adjourn that to the May 11th. Second. Meeting. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, that's carried. Next is um, 50 Eastdale Avenue. Good evening. How do you evening. do? Good evening. You were sworn last time, right? Yes, we were. Okay. Then you're still under oath. And so what's new? I think there are um, uh, a couple of things, Mr. Chairman and members. Um, one is that um, um, I'd like to include in the record that, um, that revised calculation of square footage of the proposed signage uh, based on an interpretation from the zoning administrator uh, that consistent with the zoning ordinance, the smallest rectangle or other shape which encompasses the sign um, is how the sign is to be measured. So the smallest polygon and, and, uh, and Todd will pass these out is, um, it's 46.77 square feet as opposed to the 76, point, uh, uh, 76 plus square feet that was advertised. So in reality, it's a, it's a much smaller variance. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Forty-six point seven seven. I would like to note that that does still have seven or about six square feet of dead space in between the height of the letters and the um, and the logo, the branding at the top. 
Okay, and we did receive a letter from the county. Do you have a copy of that? We do, and, and Mr. Chairman, I guess a, a couple of comments on that. One is uh, we think the letter is not timely, and therefore the board is not bound um, by, uh, by its findings. Um, and we last met here on uh, February 10th, um, and so it's been uh, nearly 30 days since we met. The county has 30 days in which to respond, um, or if they, if they miss that date, they, as long as they get it to the, uh, the, the town two days before the meeting, it's still applicable. Um, so, presuming there was a uh, circulation before we met the first time, this letter is not binding on the uh, on the on the uh, ZBA as uh, requiring an override. But I will say, should you you know desire to uh, to approve the sign and, and um, uh, just a couple of items about uh, what the uh, county has written there is is number one again the sign as measured based on earlier direction is not uh, accurate for the actual. Uh, the actual sign that's proposed, because we uh, again have this much smaller measured sign. Uh, and second, the county references they wanted to see a complete sign package, um, and we did give you a complete sign package. And I think, our, our, as our testimony last time was pretty clear, there is not a uh, not a proposed monument sign uh, for Premier Medical in here. So I think those those items um, uh, are, are, are counter to what the, the county has found. <laughs> And they indicate that the temporary sign that's up there is, is only 20 square feet. Is that accurate? The banner, well, actually, I thought the banner. Defer to the guy who, who built it, right? I, I believe it is uh, 4 <coughs> foot by 12 foot. So I believe that is 48 square feet. So the county um, thought that that was 20 square feet and thought that was more than accurate, more than adequate. So if, if, the, if you were temporary yeah. one if that banner is 48 square feet let me double I don't know if I have that exact figure I believe it is I want to say it's four feet by 12 I might be wrong in either case it, um, let me see if I have that here for me I know there is a sign permit waiting for for that let's see if I have that with me excuse me one second <coughs> Not certain that I have that exact measurement with me. I do not have that measurement. With me. I do apologize. And for whatever it's worth, my notes based on the earlier conversations with Todd is that it was it was 12 by 4, but that, that doesn't necessarily help you. Do we have any idea where the county would have gotten 20 square feet from? I do not. Um, I do not. Definitely 12 feet uh, long. I know that for certain. Uh, I recall hanging it uh, personally, and I, I would, I'm quite certain it's over two square, two feet tall. I can absolutely say that. <laughs> I was in a bucket truck installing it myself, and <laughs> yeah, I am quite certain. I may be incorrect. My notes indicated that you testified that it was 48 square feet at the yeah. last time. Yeah, I believe it was four by 12. Okay. Yeah, that my memory serves me. I just don't have a supporting document in front of me. Okay, anything else? That's it. The, the only other thing I would like to just, um, that's also in the package that we had handed before, um, is also the brightness of the sign. That sign is actually designed not to be as bright as a normally internally illuminated sign. If you look there, it's actually gonna be done with perf material, which is actually light blocking material. Um, if you've ever walked into a business and you look at the front of the facade and you see a graphic on the front of it, but then you walk in and you turn around and you can actually see out, it is knocking down the light by about 50%. So the illumination that a normal sign of that size would have is going to be reduced by the actual amount of light projecting out of it. Um, so as far as the uh, illuminescence of it, it would be reduced substantially than uh, a sign of the same exact square footage. Okay. And about how many feet from um, 44 is the, is the front of the building? My guess is close to 500. But right. Yeah. I think as we right. Out. I think as we testified last time, it was about 500 feet from uh, from 44. Yeah. Okay. Christine, any questions? No questions. Mark. <coughs> no questions. <coughs> no questions. Tony. No, I have none. Phyllis. Good luck. And it goes off at night when the business is closed, or is it lit all the time? 
Uh, I, it's on a timer, but I, I actually don't know the uh, the full hours of uh, of its operation. Um, I don't recall what those uh, what those are. Yeah, I do. I do not recall that either. Uh, it can be set up with a photo cell, as well as a backup timer, which is what we normally recommend to a client. Um, and most people don't want to run it 24 hours a day. There's no point to have it eliminated at that point. I'll just say, on average, most businesses I deal with, I'm not speaking for this one in general, most of them shut down around 11, and they start them up usually around 5 for, uh, you know, 5 to 6 o'clock, depending on their opening time. If their opening time is 9, they may only set it an hour beforehand for people to navigate to the facility. Because the photo cell won't really help, right? Photo cell is going to want to come on when it's dark and not. Photo cell would be the event of a large storm coming in, something of that nature, okay. where it might want to come on. So where override the clock. Allowed, yes. Override the clock. Uh, okay. The timer overrides the photo cell, though. Okay. Or excuse me, the photo cell overrides the timer. I apologize. Okay. Okay. Anyone from the audience that wishes to speak regarding this application? Okay. Hearing none, then I'll just vote to uh, make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, carried. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Next is uh, Nexter Creitis. Is that close at all? Anywhere? Uh, okay. Okay, I'm here to. Uh, First, I'm going to ask you to state your name oh, and Nestor then be sworn in. I'm Nestor Kuritsis. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're going to provide tonight is true and complete to the best of your knowledge? Yes, I do. Okay. What's your application involved? Well, um, I purchased this property with two sheds. Um, the one shed is um, attached to the house, so it actually looks like it's part of the house. The other one is your typical backyard shed. Um, wanted to keep both of them, and uh, after I submitted uh, plans to the building department for review, I was informed um, by the zoning that uh, the sheds were too close to the adjacent property lines. So I, uh, I searched in the records uh, and found a survey which um, shows um, both of the sheds, and it shows a, a dimension, but although it's a little hard to read. So I used those dimensions to prepare my own site plan to cl more clearly show the location of the two sheds. Um, the one smaller shed that's attached to the house is uh, 10 foot 4 inches from the property line, and the other larger shed in the backyard is uh, 4 foot 3 from the property line, as I believe is the property line from the chain link fence that's there. Um, and so my argument would be that um, these sheds have been in existence in the neighborhood since at least 1992, which is the um, date of the survey that I was using, and they do blend in with the neighborhood. I, I don't feel that they pro um, uh, provide any sort of visual <clears throat> problem to uh, neighbors, and um, I would ask that I be allowed to keep um, both of the sheds in, intact. Uh, and so I, I attached some photographs where I, I attempted to show with a red line where my best guess was where the property line is located, and I have also attached some photos. Um, in the photos there, the shed and the house are two different colors, but at this point they're similar. So um, that, that's the basis of my, uh, of my appeal here. So, uh, and uh, it's impractical to move either of them. I mean, I'll, uh, they, they're not really, you know, they're temporary structures. If they're not on a full foundation, so they would have to be demolished. Uh, so I couldn't really move one in, into the yard without, without really destroying it. What, um, what's the date of the survey that you attached? I believe it's 1992. How old do you think that shed is? I mean, it might. Okay, there's two. The one that's attached uh, to the, the house. The is, detached one. The, the detached, detached one. one could be from that time period. I mean, it could be later. Um, it's, a, it's a little unusual in the sense that someone built a secondary fence inside the chain link fence. So I think maybe that was a dog run. Um, but. It, it, it really could be from 92 or it could be from later. I don't think it's older than that. I mean, it's, it, you know, it could be from 2000. I, I don't really know. It's hard to say. <coughs> it, well, in my, it looked a little, uh, a little newer. It, yes, well, um, perhaps, yes. And also it looks larger than the one on the survey. 
Yes. And it looks like it's farther away. It's true. Yeah, it's a little, little different, little different position. It's true. Right. So, my suspicion is that it's not. That's not the one that was there on the survey. Okay. However, this the little or the side one is is def seems like it is though. I mean, that the other first shed does seem like the, the one that's there in the house right now. So. And that survey has the stockyard fence. Stockade fence. Yeah, that's a, that's a, part of that was there. And that's where, if you look in the photo, I think you can see part of that. Um, but the whole run of it that you see on this survey is, is not there at this time. Um, so. Then there's an indication of a stockade fence on the other side. And I can't be sure if that's what's there now or isn't, because as I say, there's a, there's a, there is a chain link fence. I, I don't know, again, why anyone would put a fence in so deep from their property line unless it was some, you know, someone who didn't really understand where their, where their property was, so. <coughs> Christine, you have any questions? That was my question about the age of the, of the shed. Um, you know, I, I honestly, you know, I hadn't given that much thought. I, I just assumed it was built after the house by maybe 10 years or so, or I don't know. The house is from maybe the early 80s, and this is maybe from 85, 90, 95. I, I don't know. I mean, it's not hard, hard to really tell. Well, partial access indicates that it was built in 72. Oh, the house. Yeah. Okay. And then... Yeah, I tried to use parcel access as well to, to determine the property lines, you know, and but fortunately we did have the survey and because the parcel access was is not really that accurate. It's it's off by a few feet, so okay. <clears throat> Art, any other questions? No, no questions. Larry? No questions. Tony? No questions. Phyllis. Do you have <clears throat> Excuse me. Do you have any plans to um, make any repairs on either of those sheds if they're indeed approved? Uh, well, the one in the rear yard, the freestanding shed, is in very good condition, and we put a new roof on it because that was the only thing that had, that had an issue had an issue with the other shed, which is attached to the house, is also in good condition. It also received a new roof, and we painted it to uh, match the new color of the house. So it really totally appears as if it's part of that. I mean, from the street, you cannot tell that that's a shed. You just think that's part of maybe a living room or something. So yes, we have renovated it to a certain extent. Okay, thank you. Uh, anyone from the audience want to comment on this application? Um, okay, then hearing none, I'll move that we close the public hearing. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Thanks very much. Thank you. Next is Michael Belfiore, 25 on Road Drive. Hey, can you state your name? Michael Belfiore. Okay. Yeah. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're going to provide tonight is true and complete to the best of your knowledge? Yes, I do. Okay. Why don't you tell us about your application? Sure. Looking to build a two car garage on our property. Um, detached from the house, adjacent to the house. Um, and uh, in order to do so, uh, it's gonna encroach upon the property line. So I've put together uh, a proposal. I also have some, um, some other documentation I brought. Uh, I have letters from my neighbors, as well as um, a photograph of a house that's, uh, that's already got something similar to what, what we're looking for. So if it's appropriate, I'll I'm just have to bring them Give it to Lisa there and she'll pass them down. <laughs> Thank you. So it'll be a, a two car garage, uh, 24 feet by 26 feet deep, um, with, a, with a, a space enough to be able to um, get between the house and the, and the garage to, be, to get walked back into the backyard and have a, a path to bring the lawnmower through. Um, 
and uh, and have it set up so that we can still use our existing driveway. We're a two-car family right now. Um, we expect that uh, we have I have two daughters that uh, will be a driving age at some point soon, and um, you know we'll be jostling cars in and out of the driveway, and it'd be nice to have a little more space to be able to do that. So, um, so that's what we're proposing. Um, You can hang on for just a second. Sure. <coughs> How tall is the uh, building going to be? Um, it would be a ten-foot wall. I haven't, um, I haven't engaged the architect yet because I wanted to make sure that this was approved before I spent the money to get the architect. Uh, it's, it's quite pricey. Um, but uh, it'd be 10 foot walls, and I'm guessing maybe another five to six feet for the pitch of the roof. And it's, you want it 26 feet deep? Deep, yeah. Okay. And, uh, you know, it's set, um, uh, it would be parallel with the house, and the house isn't quite parallel with the property line. So it would encroach upon the property line further in the back corner, the back right corner, than it would the front right corner um, so that's why I, you know I put the variance at we, we left a little room to a little bit of wiggle room uh, in case we needed it but um, but I've worked I've worked with my surveyor and uh, and they've given me the dimensions off the house that we could go to fit the building there so um, Christine you have any questions no questions no, no questions. Well, actually, I do. Looking at the picture, sorry. Sure. <clears throat> Your right side going down toward the house is it looks like the driveway is cut into that lawn. Is that the edge of the property versus where the? So the picture is of. Um, I'm sorry, I should explain that. That's 15 Monroe Drive. That's a that's, oh, that's a house in you. my neighborhood. Yeah. So I just provided that to show that okay. there is a, a house that has this sort of um, okay. garage. Uh, I, I counted 10 garages in our neighborhood, uh, two car garages, uh, just in our neighborhood. Um, most of them are attached to the house. This one has a little bit, it's, I wouldn't even call it a breezeway, but it's, it's some sort of entrance way into the house. Um, but the, the structure of the garage is, is actually detached. And as you can see, uh, the house on the right, it's, it's pretty close to that side of their house. Um, this my my proposal at my property would be even further from the house next to mine i think it's more than 25 feet um i've spoken with the neighbors there they're they're okay with us building it that's the letter that they they uh, provided me uh their only concern was that we uh did some sort of a window dressing if we're going to do windows on that side of the house for privacy for them uh which i've agreed to do uh and i might even just not even have windows if that's if that makes it uh windows in the garage. yeah yeah they just had some, you know, just didn't want people looking in from there, into their uh, living room. That's what they, they said to me, so. Um, and then everything would match our current house. The siding would be the same. The roof would be the same. Uh, same color and everything. So and you're going to keep your under, the garage that's under the house? That's I don't have any plans for that at, at this point. Um, you know, m maybe down the road we might want to convert it. Um, okay. but, but as of this point, we'd keep it just because... Uh, the garage project is going to be ex 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 expensive as it is, so okay. one thing at a time. Thank you. And I don't recall the driveway now. Are you going to have to enlarge the driveway to meet the new we, garage? We don't have to enlarge it, no. Okay. So we get to keep the existing footprint. Okay. Larry? No questions. Tony? No questions. Phyllis? No questions. Okay. Is there anyone from the audience that wishes to speak regarding this application? Okay, hearing none, I make a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Well, actually, did you second it? I did. Okay. I no. thought you said so moved, but no, second. Sorry. Okay. All right. Sorry. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Can I just ask a question? What, what happens from here? Um, <coughs> when all the applications are done, um, then we'll deliberate. In generally in the order that they were taken, unless some people are here. If you're here, we'll take you before people that aren't here. 
um, and we'll make our decision. If you're not, if you don't want to stay for this very titillating discussion, then you can find out tomorrow. Okay, but well, we can't stay. What's that? I can't stay. If you, if you like. Yes. Okay. All right. You got no life. You can stay. What's that? You got no life. You can stay. Watch. <laughs> well, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Hmm. Next is Lynn Tai and Patrick Laffin. Okay, would you state your names? Uh, Patrick Laffin. I'm Lynn Laffin now because we're married. <laughs> okay. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're going to provide tonight is true and complete to the best of your knowledge? Yes, yes. we do. Okay. Why don't you tell us about your application? Okay, we, uh, we recently, actually in June, bought the house on Oak Bend Road. And uh, what our kind of our plan was, was to put a, uh, a three-car garage on the front of it, much like the previous gentleman was talking about. Um, basically, so we can get our cars in the garage and we would have a place now, I have a, a truck also that I would put in the garage in the third bay. Right now, they're, they're kind of all parked in, in front of the house. And um, we, we, we also employed a, uh, an, arch or an architect to do a preliminary drawing for us. He gave us some ideas, which I, I included a very rough sketch in the packet. Um, it also will improve the front look of our house. Right now, the garage that's there is kind of very plain and very kind of commercial looking. So this would kind of put some peaks and make it look just a little bit nicer. Um, he did have a concern about the property line, so we did hire a surveyor to come in, um, Bob Oswald, and he laid the property line for us. And, um, and the architect uh, gave him the dimensions of the addition, which is, I think I highlighted in a different color there. And when we did that, it actually came out that it was uh, 13 feet off the, the property line. Now, the, the house itself right now is, uh, and the reason why we positioned the garage where it was, was um, so that we could come off the existing side of the house and from the front of the house, it would look a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. And then we would do three bay doors instead of the, the big 16 foot door that I have now. Um, and, and that's pretty, pretty much it. Now, the neighbors kind of go up on a hill, so we wouldn't be going any higher than, than the existing house now. We, we're not going to be disturbing any trees or anything like that. And basically, our driveway, um, which is also on the survey, you can see is kind of right where we want to put the garage. You can actually see it kind of goes over into that third position now. So pretty much all of that would stay the same. We might need to make the garage or the driveway just a little bit wider to swing into that last one. Okay. And why is the driveway now? Um, why did, it's probably two cars wide. Okay. I'm not sure exactly. Right. And uh, on your diagram, it looks like the garage is coming way forward of the house. Is that correct? It's going to come in front of, yeah, the existing part there. But it's, it's still, I believe, far enough away from the road for the very, you know, for not requiring a front variant. And it's it will be attached to the house? It will be portion, attached to the house. Part of the house. Okay. So when you looked at our house now, I mean, it would almost look like it was, you know, part of the house. It's not like we're putting any addition on that would change the, the look or, or anything of the, of the house, so to speak. Okay. Christine? No, that's it. No questions. All right. <clears throat> You're talking about... <clears throat> Excuse me. Widening the widening the driveway was, would that be all the way from the road back or just no no I, I think swing, I just need to swing to the right yeah, yeah no there's plenty of room to come in from the road I would just need it to kind of swing into that that and last garage does. yeah and it, al it already does it to already, a certain yeah. extent right, so you're just going to draw that back a little bit yeah to, just to a little bit just to get me in. <clears throat> and and we had originally supplied um, a letter from my neighbor uh, saying that they were. They were okay with it. And then I, I know she came up and she said, I think she submitted another letter that she wasn't, and she talked with us last night. She said she was going to call the zoning department today. I don't know if she did or which she which, did. which she neighbors at okay. five. Yeah. We just went five. over to, I mean, they're 90 years old, and we wanted to sit down with them and go over it again so they understood because it's important. They understand and, that. and the other thing is, too, is like the previous gentleman, we're kind of doing this in stages because. 
because my mom is 80 something years old and, and our thought is we both have kids her kids are in Connecticut my kids uh, are in New York City so that when they come up we need the two bedrooms that we have now for when they would visit and my plan is that when my mother's ready to give up her house we're gonna bring her over and move, move in with us and where the existing garage sits now is like a perfect spot where we can put just another bedroom kind of a suite for her because there's a bathroom right there and then she can get to the kitchen she can get out on the sun porch so it's kind of a perfect spot you know for her but once again that's that's when she's ready to come so okay a perfect spot as a bedroom or as an apartment no bedroom. as a bedroom okay. yeah because the kitchen is right there you know so there's so they're not, both yeah both yeah. of them are very old so okay <clears throat> anything else <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm, I'm just reading this, you know, the letter from Eight Oak Bend. Yeah. Are, are they? They're not in favor of it. Eight. Well, she's the one that called today. Uh, is that is that Cosmo and? No, that Joe? was Seven Oak. Oh, okay. Oh, this I didn't. This is a new one. Oh, I didn't know Thanks. that one. Okay. I just got it. Oh, okay. okay. So I'll read this into the record. Um, I'm writing about the variance requested at Five Oak Bend Road. My issues with the parking. Presently, there is a two-car garage. There are, on occasions, three or four vehicles in the driveway, including, at present, a truck and a snowplow. I worry that there will be even more vehicles out there. When the garage is enlarged and when the mother-in-law moves in, <laughs> it may be unsightly in a residential neighborhood. And I'm Ann Jansen, 8, eight Oak, Bank Road, and and that's kind of really what I'm trying to do. That because if you look at my house now, you're going to see, you know, because in the existing garage, the the kind of the uh, fireplace comes out into part of it, which makes it even narrower. It's, it's a narrow garage to start, and then the the fireplace comes out in part of it, and then by the time you put a tractor and a snowblower snowblower in there, it kind of makes it a little hard. So my intention is exactly what her concern is is to take the cars that you're seeing parking out front, which is our cars, and the truck, and get them in that garage. So the snow plow is just the basic truck with the plow on it? It's not a yeah, commercial, yeah. It's not and, a commercial and, vehicle? And I, I don't do anything commercially with it. I really just use okay. it for my family. You know, okay. they, they all live around, so think, I plow them. Can you think you can get that in the garage at some point in life? Yes, I do. That's why the garage is a little, a little deeper. Yeah. No more questions. Yeah. Yeah, and that, that's exactly what I'm trying to clean up is all the cars. Larry? No questions. Tony? No questions. Phyllis? No questions. Okay, is there anyone from the audience that wishes to speak regarding this application? Okay, I don't hear anyone, so I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Okay, opposed? All right, thank you. Thank you very much. And next is Marianne and Donald DeVito. Hi. If you don't mind stating your names. Marie and DeVito. Donald DeVito. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're going to provide tonight is true and complete to the best of your knowledge? Yes. Yeah. Okay, why don't you tell us what you okay. want to do? Okay, so uh, we have an existing deck on the back of our house uh, that doesn't uh, meet the uh, zoning requirements. It's too close to the uh, fence. We need like a, a variance to, uh, to have it existing on the, the house. It's basically, it's parallel to the back of the house on one side, and it comes in some on the other side. <coughs> so there's, a, it's like eight feet from the one side fence, and like 17, 17 three inches from the other side of the fence. Okay. So we need various to, to make that legal. Is it in line with the house? It's in line with the house, yes. Okay. How long has it been there? Excuse me? How long has it been there? Been there? Uh, 30, 35 years. Okay. And um, I couldn't get around to see um, the back of it, but what kind of shape is it in? It needs to be replaced. So <clears throat> uh, after I get the zoning, the variants on it, then I'm going to have it rebuilt. Okay. No questions. 
<clears throat> when you have it rebuilt, it's going to be the same size. You're not going to go past. I, 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 I want to get it like two, two feet bigger. The, uh, the diagram shows the uh, 12 feet deep. That's how I want it to be. Okay, right now the, it's about 10 feet. Okay, so the width's going to be the same, though. The width, the width is exactly the same, yes. So you're not going to infringe it? No, not going, no, not going north yep. or south. I mean, you've you got plenty of room in the back. Yeah, plenty of back. No more questions. Thank you. There. Tony? No questions. Philip? No questions. Anyone in the audience wish to speak on this application? Hearing none, I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Thanks very much. Thank, Thank you. you. The 14 Adam Street thing, we'll get that or? All right, anyone need a break? Or you want to go straight ahead? Okay. So let's see. Uh, number one was adjourned. Number two was withdrawn. Number three. All right, you want to take care of that? Staff report's not going to help you with this. Yeah, there's no staff report. Right? <laughs> well, we didn't know it changed until uh, tonight. So. Okay. So, help me through this one. You can't. Okay, so the uh, mental, health, uh, health, mental Health America, Dutchess County. Uh, so, maybe I can help a little bit. What? So, maybe I can help a little yeah, bit. Go ahead. There's now a proposal for two signs, mm -hmm. each of 18.66 feet. Mm -hmm. There are now two establishments in the building because the Claudio Cares is renting out space. There is a right. lease in there. So if the board were to consider them as um, to granting them, it would be two different variances for two different establishments. And each variance would be 3.66 feet because 15 square feet is allowed. So that's, why you're sitting, that's why you're sitting in that chair. Dutchess County has said that the granting of the first sign is a matter of local concern because the plans were submitted tonight. They haven't seen the new plans, but it can be assumed that they would say that the second sign would also be a matter of local concern. And, and we're okay going ahead with that? Yes, because local concern does not require a supermajority. It would So then the board would need four votes to pass any resolution, right. any motions that it chose to make tonight. And the other part was that if the lease ends for uh, this establishment, the sign has to come down right after the lease ends, correct? Correct. That would, well, be, a, the, that the, would be a condition, right? Right. I mean, and that's true of any business in the code. You can, it, all signs have to be for businesses that are on premises. Okay, there are no, we don't have any staff reports, so, okay. <laughs> right? The findings are no longer. Uh, yeah. There is a staff report, but it's staff not report. applicable. Right, right, exactly. No longer useful. Okay. Would you like findings? We could make some up. Yes, like we, Mike or I can make findings if you would, if the board would like. Sure. <clears throat> so, uh, as to the first criteria, whether an undesirable change would be made in the area, um, a variance of rough up 3.66 feet is not. Um, substantial is not um, going to make a change in the area. In this instance, there is an existing sign of the same size that's being replaced on the one side and then the addition of a mat size of matching sign on the other side. Uh, second is whether there is an alternative available to the applicant other than uh, granting of the variance. Um, the board can conclude that the size of this sign is not, um, that there are no alternatives because a smaller sign would not have the required visibility. The third criteria is whether the signs are substantial. And in this case, a variance of 3.66 feet is neither mathematically nor visually substantial. Second question, fourth point is whether there are any environmental changes. And in this instance, there is one existing sign. There would be a second, so that would be a visual change, but it's not, would not be deemed adverse because it's not an oversized sign. And the last is whether the, uh, the um, 
difficulty is self-created, and in this instance, it's arguably self-created because they want to replace an existing sign and add a new sign. So but that's not fatal to the variance. Right. So there's no problem with, well, since they reduced the sign size in total, we don't even have to mention the old sign at all because it was wrong. We don't have to mention the 121 square feet sign, correct. I mean, it's good to note that the applicant proposed a larger sign, which has been modified reduced, for this, which dramatically. the resolution would note. Okay. I make a motion that the uh, board pass the proposed sign signage of two signs at 18.66 square feet with the condition that if the lease ends, those signs will, that sign would come down shortly thereafter. Any second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And one recusal. And one, one recusal, yes, sir. Pass, so the vote pass, is 501. Five, five, five zero one, right. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Sure. Okay, the next one's Stewart's. That's adjourned until May 11th. And um, so. Did you have a staff report on this one? There is a staff report. I staff. Yeah. It did not have the benefit of the county's letter. Well, in regards to the county's letter, they, they specifically state that the temporary sign that's there is adequate. Although they assume that to be 20 square feet, it appears that it's, it's much bigger. Right. In fact, it's smaller than the applicant's right. permanent sign. So, so that would mean that the proposals good for them. So let's see. So I'll make a motion to approve an application set forth as number five um, for a 46.77 square foot sign which requires a variance of, is it 31.77 mm -hmm. square feet, as well as a second wall sign of 11.25 square, square feet to be located in the rear of the building. <clears throat> its decision is based upon the review of the application, testimony of the applicants, uh, testimony offered in the public hearing, results of site visits by board members, and in approving this variance, the board uh, adopts uh, the findings set forth in the staff uh, review. Second. Any, any comments? Any discussion? Mm -hmm. Any concerns? One thing I think we missed, and I apologize for not bringing this up, is that we need to do an egg deck. Okay. okay. So. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, so. We have to move to be lead agency, is that right? Um, yeah. The board should decide that it's lead agency. If there are no other interested or involved agencies, so therefore you can just declare yourself lead agency and then proceed to the NAG deck. Okay. Then um, is there a short EA? There is a short EA, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, basically, we'll just they still have to do that. Give them the NAG deck. <clears throat> so, um, based upon the fact that there seem to be no other interested parties, I move that the um, Zoning Board of Appeals be the lead agency on this and that there's a negative declaration of um, impact based upon the short mm -hmm. EAF. Yeah. Second. Did someone say you second? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Now, do I have to move again for the variance? Yeah. Okay. So then I move. <clears throat> to approve the variance set forth in number five, based upon them to grant a variance of um, 15 square feet, 15 square feet for a total sign of 46.77 square feet, and an additional 11. You're actually point. granting a variance of 31.77 square Thir feet. Yes, 31. Point, okay, that's right. 31.77 square foot variance. In addition to an 11.25 square foot sign to be located in the rear, 
It's based upon a review of the application, testimony of the applicant, testimony offered in the public hearing, results of site visits by board members, and approving the variance the board accepts uh, the findings in the staff recommendation. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Okay, and now that um, Mike has reminded us about NEGDEX, we need to go back and do one for Dutchess House Mental Co Dutchess County Mental Health. And then you can simply reaffirm your other. All right, you're up. Where did you get that? Where'd you get that? All right, all you need is a motion that the ZBA declare itself to be lead agency yep. and to find that the project as proposed will have no significant adverse environmental effects. Thanks. Okay. I propose that the uh, <coughs> zoning board make itself lead, lead, ag lead agency. Second. Thank you. And I really forgot what you told me. Uh, third. Third. So if you want to do it that way, then now vote on the lead agency motion. Okay. So call the, any discussion? Any, yes. Any discussion on the? Okay, and then call and the question. Aye. Aye. So that passes 5-0 and then one recusal. Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay. And then the next motion would be to approve, approve that, to find that the project will not have any significant adverse environmental impacts. You say so moved. So moved. Yeah, there you go. Second. I like that. It's a good thing you're here. Any discussion on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And one recusal. One recusal. Thank you. And now I actually do one more and just reaffirm the prior because you already voted on it. So technically you should um, have voted on the variant, the NAG deck first. So just so move we'll to reaffirm your prior reaffirm variance. So okay. I move that we reaffirm our prior variance. All in favor? Second. And aye. <laughs> Opposed? Recusal one. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. <clears throat> and next will be under new business number one, um, 12 Sutton Park. Anybody have any kind of concerns about that? I think the biggest concern, well, the two, you know, getting the trucks out of the driveway to appease the neighbor and the width of the driveway. We've been down that road. Is the two sheds? No, wait. Oh, this is, it's not that oh, this, I'm sorry. I lied. This is two sheds. All right, the sheds. Never mind. Back up. I, this, this is not unusual. I don't think the yard, the way the yard's set up, he, uh, we, he could move the newest of the sheds, but like we all know that dragging a shed to a new location is fairly expensive and it'll probably destroy the shed. No neighbors are complaining. It's been there at least 10 years, it sounds like. I'm, I'm good with it. The attached one looks like it's part of the house. Yeah, you, you don't even see it. Any other concerns? No. Good with this. Okay. There was no staff report. No. Okay. <clears throat> so I make a motion to accept uh, an area variance under new business number one, 12 Sutton Park, to allow um, a detached shed uh, four feet three inches from the west side of the property where 10 feet is required, requiring a variance of five feet nine inches. The attached shed. Um, is located 10 feet 4 inches from the east property line where 20 feet is required, requiring a variance of 9 feet 8 inches. Um, and uh, the findings would be whether an undesirable change would be produced in the character of the neighborhood. Certainly the uh, attached part of the, the attached shed has been there for quite some time and it appears uh, the detached shed has been there qu uh, quite a long time without any um, adverse effects. Whether the benefit sought by the applicant can be achieved by some method feasible to pursue. Uh, you would have to destroy part of the house, and um, as discussed, it's difficult to move a shed of that size without damage. Whether the requested area variance is substantial, it is substantial in the sense, um, I suppose, of the amount, but the size of the lot, I think, kind of minimizes that impact. And whether the proposed variance will have an adverse effect or impact on the physical or environmental conditions in the neighborhood. Um, I think that it's similar with other um, locations or other uh, properties in the neighborhood. And whether the d alleged difficulty was self-created, it certainly was, as it was purchased that way. However, that's not a, um, a necessarily preclude the granting of the area of variance. And I make those um, findings. Christine? Okay. Um, 
I move that the board approve the request for an area variance set forth in new business item number one. This decision is based on a review of the application, testimony of the applicant, testimony offered in the public hearing, and results of site visits by board members. In approving this variance, the board adopts the findings as set forth by the chair. So moved. Second. Uh, any discussions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, motion's carried. Um, next is 25 Monroe Drive to build a two-car garage constructed four feet from the side yard where 10 feet is required, requiring a six-foot side yard variance. All right, you want to do this one? Sure. Oh, I suppose you want me to make the findings? Sure. Okay. okay, I'll do that for you. You're, okay. You're with that. Then I would, um, I move that um, the findings be um, as follows, whether an undesirable change will be produced in the character of the neighborhood. Uh, it appears that other uh, properties in the neighborhood have similar uh, two-car garages. Whether the benefit sought by the applicant can be achieved by some method feasible to pursue other than an area variance. There's no other possible way to position a two-car garage uh, in that lot without a variance. Whether the requested area variance is substantial. Um, it's somewhat substantial. Um, uh, but it's similar to uh, other properties in the area. And again, uh, will not have any adverse effect on the physical or environmental conditions of the neighborhood since it's consistent with those neighborhood properties. And it's certainly self-created. However, that's not a basis to deny the area of variance. And I move those findings if you accept those. I accept. Okay. I move that the board approve the request for an area of variance set Fourth and item two. New okay. business mm -hmm. item two New or business. item seven. New business item two or item seven. This decision is based on a review of the application, testimony of the applicant, testimony offered in the public hearings and results of site visits by board members. In approving this variance, the board adopts its findings, those set forth by the chairman. And there are no really no restrictions, no uh, no oh, you want to um, just add you know, windows along the, the one property line? I'm sorry? Okay. I don't what's, know that the board that? needs to be involved in that. You okay. mean screening and stuff like that? The neighbors were working out on whether they wanted right. to. Yes. So yeah. I think we can leave that with the neighbors. That's, but if the board thinks otherwise, you can add um, that. Otherwise, no conditions. You're good? I have no okay. conditions for it. All right. So, so you need to say so, so moved. So moved. <laughs> Second. Second. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the motion's carried. Uh, next are the Laffins, Five Oak Bend Road. A variance to permit the expansion of an existing garage located, to be located 13 feet from the north property line where 20 feet is required, requiring a seven <coughs> foot variance. Uh, this is the one where I had the question on the driveway. Right. So um, I, I move, well, I will make these findings. Well, I suppose I can do the whole thing. I move that the board approve the request for an area of variance set forth in new business three. Um, it's based upon a review of the application, testimony of the applicant, testimony offered by the public hearing, and results of site visits by board members. In approving this variance, the board adopts the findings as follows. With an undesirable change <coughs> reduced in the character of the neighborhood or a detriment to nearby properties uh, will be created by granting of the area variance. I think that the proposal by the applicant and is consistent with uh, properties in the neighborhood and will actually result in a um, lessening of any impact in the, in the neighborhood. And whether the benefit can be achieved by some method feasible for the applicant to pursue other than an area variance, I don't see how that's possible based upon the applicant's um, desires, and whether the requested area variance is substantial. Um, perhaps, but in the sense that it's really in the same line as um, the house, I don't see that as a big enough impact. And um, whether it have an as adverse effect on the physical or environmental conditions in the neighborhood, as the applicant discussed, this will actually um, reduce some of the complaints of the neighbors. And whether the alleged difficulty was self-created it certainly is, but it's not a basis to um, uh, deny the variance. Any comments on those findings? 
Any other comments on the? Then I so move that. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Opposed? Okay, it's motion's carried. Thank you. Um, and next is the vetoes at 63 Crestwood Boulevard to legalize an existing rear deck located eight feet from the south side yard where 20 feet is required, requiring a variance of eight feet. And um, a two foot three inch variance from the north side yard. Yes. 12 feet. It's a typo. It actually should be a 12 feet variance because yeah. it's uh, eight feet from the south oh, side yard. Feet. Right. So. Okay. Is that how it was advertised? Then? It was advertised, but the distance from the side yard is correct. So, so it was stuff. just our typo that calculating the variance needed. So I think we're okay from a legal standpoint. Okay. And actually, the ad, the advertise the legal might have been correct. I'm not sure, but either way, I think we're okay. Okay. Larry, you okay with this? Oh, so let me make some findings. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whether an undesirable change would reduce in the character of the neighborhood or detriment to nearby properties, um, this has been in existence for quite some time. Uh, whether it can be sought by, be achieved by some other method feasible for the applicant to pursue. Um, he's uh, repairing or replacing the existing deck and uh, it's in line with the, the house and uh, so I don't think there's any other way to do that without an area variance. The requested area variance is um, considerable but not so much to, um, to deny it and whether it will have an adverse effect on the impact of the physical or environmental conditions. It's been there for quite some time without any impact. And it's certainly self-created, but that's not a basis to deny it. And those are, I make those my findings, unless anybody wants to add anything. Okay, then those are my findings. I move that the board approve the request for an area of area set forth an item, uh, new business number four. This, this decision is based on a review of the application, testimony of the applicant, testimony offered in a public hearing, results of site visits by board members, and the findings by the chair. Second. Second. Did you, any discussion? No All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, that's carried. Okay. Um, the other, uh, some other business, 14 Adam Street, anybody here to speak about that? Uh, sure, have a seat, tell, me, tell us your name. Uh, my name is Edwin Martinez, and Do I'm the owner of 14 Adam Street. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're going to provide tonight is true and complete to the best of your knowledge? Yes, I do. What can we help you with tonight? So, um, I'm seeking, uh, um, some type of advice on, on where to take this property. I've supplied um, some photos and a letter from my architect as to um, the condition of this property. And just a little uh, brief history of the property. I purchased the property back in September of 2018. It's basically, I have two lots, uh, two houses on a, a non-conforming lot. Um, uh, this property was abandoned for probably 15 to 20 years. Uh, the first house is a, is a three bedroom, one bath um, ranch house. And the rear house is, a, is a, basically it was a two-family. It has two electrical meters on one side. And uh, the footprint itself, as it stands now, has one entrance on the right-hand side, both leading to uh, an apartment on the second floor. And then the other apartment is down on the first floor. And that building is dilapidated. Um, as I, uh, I supplied the letter from my uh, architect, uh, pretty much uh, reiterating uh, the, the property uh, the way he stands now, and uh, I can give you some highlights. Well, what do you want to do? Well, I'm seeking a variance uh, to bring the structure down, rebuild it, and maybe uh, get two family up and going on that on that property. Okay. So, have you spoken to the zoning administrator? I have, um, and uh, I, I basically I'm here for a consultation. Um, they told me to, you know, maybe the board would be willing to hear uh, where I want to take this application and give me some guidance as to. Um, what I should do. Uh, I mean, that's. 
I think the applicant was did not want to go through the entire process until he got some feedback from the board as to whether they might be amenable to the process of granting a variance for a house that straddles the lot line. Now, you this is presently two lots. This is uh, uh, it's, it's actually two parcels. Uh, I supplied uh, the survey. Mm -hmm. Is there a reason you can't combine it to one parcel so that well, you? I could. I could also seek a variance to uh, to basically. Uh, I, I guess they. Zoning told me it was a 210 132 to a variance to rebuild without fire casualty, and the other variance would be a 210 13E variance to remove the lot line uh, and have a second dwelling on a single lot. That's what I, I was told. Um, so I'm just seeking. Um, so I don't know that a variance is needed to remove a lot line. I think that might be a planning board process, um, but that's not something that this would come before this board yeah, I don't think it can be I mean there's a merger process as well through the assessors I don't know how right and we if you own both lots you may be able to merge the lots without the involvement of the town it okay. may be something that you can do so I don't know if you have a real estate lawyer that you're working with but I they should you. be able to I find out that information for you so if you were to do that then that would at least eliminate the line running through the center of the house then your question to this board would be whether they would approve the rebuilding of a house in that location um, I'll tell the board as I'm sure you the board knows but you they can't give you any advisory opinions um, but they can give you you know some indication as to what they might be thinking um, they are guided by the fact that they have to give the smallest variance possible, so they might talk about whether it would be possible to change the footprint in some way of the house in order to not put it back exactly the same or to maybe shorten it or lengthen it so that you wouldn't need as much of a variance. Um, I think it would be helpful for the applicant if there were other questions that the board might thinks they might ask further down the road, that if you can highlight them now, the applicant can consider um, as he decides how he wants to move forward. So the, the building that you want to rebuild, you want to make that as a two-family? That's a two-family, yes. Okay. On the same footprint? The same footprint. Um, the way it stands now is one apartment upstairs on the second floor and the second apartment's down on the main floor. There's no way to gain access. They both have an egress on each floor. The second floor has an egress leading to the back. The first floor has an egress to the back of the house. Okay. So and it would that be owner-occupied? Uh, no, it will not be. It's, uh, I'm an investor. Um, I currently have uh, the other house, which is uh, 18 Adams. That's rehabbed already. Uh, it's got a new roof, new siding. Uh, it's got the whole. Uh, it's got a new kitchen, new plumbing, new electrical, new heating. Um, <coughs> that's done. I have a renter in that house already on that property. Um, so the second house sits nearby, uh, right in the rear. I provide pictures. I don't know if uh, mm -hmm. you have them, but. Um, yeah. It uh, gave me some before pictures of the property as I bought it. Like I said, it was abandoned for 14, 15 years. It's extremely an eyesore to the neighborhood. It's a hard working, uh, it's a, a blue collar working class family uh, neighborhood. Uh, it sits right in the rear of uh, Mid Hudson Hospital. I'm not sure if, uh, I'm pretty sure you most, most of you are familiar with that. And uh, when I first purchased this property, nobody couldn't even see the houses uh, with all the brush and trees and uh, Debris that was uh, in this property, so it's already uh, vastly improved uh, over the last year. So, uh, are so two-family houses allowed in the R20? Um, I, don't I don't know offhand. I don't know offhand either. Um, so, yes. if if a two-family house is not allowed, and this is a conversation you can have with our zoning administrator um, at any point after tonight. If they are not allowed, the fact that the property has been vacant for 15 years means you would not be able to reestablish the two okay. units in that building. But if they are allowed, then you would be able to do it as of right. Um, you would not be able to, she may say you might need a use variance, but one of the criteria for granting a use variance is you can't have created the hardship. And if you buy a property that doesn't conform to the current zoning and you know it's been vacant, you've that's essentially a self-created hardship. So it would be a bar to allowing the two units. Um, so we, that's something the town staff would have to look into as to whether a, a two family is allowed there or not. So the other question would be, uh, if, I, if, I, if that doesn't uh, go through as a two family, uh, will there be a problem with me uh, rebuilding this, this uh, as a single family? 
Well, that might be possible still. So. Right. I would think that a single, well, I know a single family is allowed in the zone. I'm not sure if two single family houses on the same parcel mm -hmm. are allowed, and it may be where you want to actually carve the parcel in a way that puts one house on one parcel and one on another. But um, are they that septic? Be the lot lines, I guess. Right. Are they septic and? Uh, no, the town water is And do they have separate connections? Um, I believe so. Okay, because those would, that would be all the kinds of questions. Mm -hmm. So my suggestion would be that you talk further with the zoning department. The building administration can talk to you about the water and sewer connections, and so on. But um, yeah, it might, we might be better served actually by doing a um, trying to get a few of the departments together for a short meeting with you to talk about oh, some of these things. Initially, I did try that. This was back in 2018. Yeah. Uh, I met with uh, Tim Sickles. Uh, we sat. Uh, mm -hmm. We all sat in the room and. Uh, this property's been uh, um, it's been on the radar for a while, apparently, uh, okay. and uh, I took on the challenge of uh, uh, trying to do something with this property, yeah. uh, but then I wasn't given clear guidance as to what I could do with it. So I started the process of just rehabbing that single family, and I took care of that, and uh, that's why I'm here today to try to handle um, the second house in the rear, right. which, which is, I mean, you see the picture, it's uh, standing back there, it's, uh, it's dilapidated, it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a hazard, you know. I had, I had uh, initially when I first bought it, I had neighbors complaining of how, um, you know, college kids were hanging out there drinking beer, and it was, a, you know, it was a, a detriment to the neighborhood, and uh, there, were, there were issues, beer bottles all over the place, and uh, rodents, and and um, you know, we sort of uh, resolved that issue by rehabbing the property, cleaning it up as much as I could. I fenced it. Um, I got a permit from the zoning division to fence it, put a fence around it, um, and. As you can see, uh, if you look at the survey, there's two lots that sit in the back of that. It's yeah. Borders Peekskill. I also own those lots, so that would be the backyard for the property. Um, if this does go. And those are in the city. That's the city. The city. Yes. Yeah. Interesting. So it's, a, it's a real complicated uh, property. It's a small lot. Um, um, I'm just looking for. Uh, um, what would be the best way? As I said, I'm an investor, but uh, of course, you know. Uh, I want to do things the right way, and uh, there's a lot of college uh, student rentals up in that neighborhood. Um, but I'm looking just to make it two family if possible. I prefer to rent to families instead of renting to uh, the students at this point. Is this the building you're talking about? Yes, that's 14 Adams in the back. Okay. So, do you think you can facilitate some meeting with yeah, them? Yeah, and I think we we'll, we can do that. I just if you if, since we're here, if there's any other thing, any other thoughts you have before you know uh, you want us to be thinking about. I'm not yeah. sure. I think the lot line taking care of that would solve or would help solve a lot of problems because you're gonna yeah. have crazy variances for that. I guess we need to think about whether a lot line revision makes better sense or a merger and having the two structures on one lot. Right. Uh, which, yeah, so we'll have to look at that from a code standpoint. <coughs> Any other comments? No? I think what Mike's proposing is the only, really the only way. <coughs> So Lizette should be able to tell you tomorrow about the two family, and then um, if you want to sh initiate with her a meeting that we can have with staff and building department, um, and we can have a ha perhaps move things forward a little bit for you. That makes sense. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Right. I appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. Thank you for your time. And finally, there's a request from the planning board for, to be lead agency on EDM equities. Um, that's Modi 23 Davis Avenue. Yeah. So yeah, what's going on? Uh, they're looking to subdivide uh, the lot. Uh, it's not really changing anything on the, you know, in terms of the, the buildings that are there. But uh, it's up because of the very complicated nature of that project where um, the parking is shared and, and everything else. Um, they, they have to not only do the subdivision, but they have to also uh, get an amended site plan and, and special use permit. 
Uh, and we weren't sure at this point. We're, we don't think it will require any zoning board action, right. but because of the nature of it, once the lot lines were in, we weren't certain whether certain things like um, you know buffers or anything would be required that would require this board's action or whether they would be um, something that would be within the standards that are the planning board has the ability to either waive or lessen. So because of that uncertainty, we decided it was better to circulate to this board and also to the town board in case the town board needed to take any action. But right now, we're not anticipating any action by this board. All right. So then I'm, anyone have any comments? Then I would make a motion that uh, we accept or uh, make the planning board lead agency for Idiom Equities, Inc. Second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Wait, sure. It's interesting that this didn't come up when they were building the second building on that lot. They've been talking about doing this for a while, and um, it came up first when the applicant wanted to run a separate water line to the second building and was told that you can't do that as because the town will only allow one water connection per lot. And that might actually have been the genesis of the reason for the subdivision now being sought. And it's been with, it, with the lawyers for a while. Thank you. Okay. Then all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Mm -hmm. Opposed? Then it's carried. OK. Uh, any other business? Then I'll make a motion to adjourn. Aye. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 That's it, we're here. It's carried.